Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve from Snow Foundry. Are you still using SSH to access your cloud-based systems? Well, today I'm gonna to talk to you about AWS Sessions Manager, which is an alternative to SSH, which takes care of a lot of the work for us. Typically when clients have a bastion host or a jump host set up, there's a whole host of problems that come with it. You gotta make sure it's patched. You gotta make sure people aren't leaving files all over. Uh, you really wanna send every command that's ran to a centralized logging server that is not the same as the jump host. AWS Sessions Manager allows us to handle all of these concerns uh, by revoking access when IAM access is revoked. So instead of trying to keep those in sync, it's gonna handle that for us. It's also gonna send the logs to CloudWatch uh, so that way we make sure we have a history of everything that's happening and it eliminates the need for a jump host. So that makes it a lot easier on the system administrator to securely manage things. And if AWS is already part of your security posture, then using their managed service is one less thing you need to do to be successful. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, we need to pull open the canonical reference, which is the AWS documentation, which I've included below the video. Um, if you're Googling for it, it's just AWS Systems Manager, Session Manager. It's gonna give us a step-by-step -step, and you'll see under the getting started with Session Manager, there's a number of these labels here, like step one, step two, step three. Uh, it's also gonna tell us about the benefits. So if you're curious as to what it does or how it does it, all of that's right here. Um, as we move through step one, the prerequisites, the most important thing here is that you need to be running the SSM agent. So we're gonna use a AMI, which runs Amazon Linux, and that will have the SSM agent. If you're using a different Linux or a different AMI, you're gonna to need to build that into it, either through your orchestration system or through something like Packer. So I'm gonna assume for this guide you have SSM, and if you don't, look for that in a future video. The next step we need to do is we need to set up IAM. So there's a couple different scenarios they provide you here. The most important thing though, is this one that's in bold twice this Amazon SSM managed instance core. Uh, because Amazon has a policy and they maintain it, it takes that weight off of our shoulders and we don't have to worry about cut and pasting a bunch of things in or maintaining those uh, or keeping it up to date. So whenever Amazon has a managed policy, if we don't have requirements which make us hack all the YAML and JSON together, we might as well just use the one they give us. And then if we need to later, we can go back and cut and paste that into a custom policy. So we're gonna use that. And so first things first, we're gonna go into IAM and we're gonna go ahead and click roles because what we wanna do is we wanna create what's called an instance profile. So we're gonna make a server on EC2, but by default that server has no permissions. So an instance profile is a way to give our EC2 server permissions. Um, in this case, we'll click create role and role and instance profile are a bit interchangeable in this context. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and click EC2. And then we're gonna say next permissions. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna switch back the docs and just copy that and paste it right in. And you see here it shows up. Okay, we did that. Um, we don't need any tags or anything for this setup. So uh, we do need to give it a name. And so, so I'm just gonna call it SSM demo. And we're gonna create that role. Um, and so now that that role exists, we can click on it here and uh, we can see exactly what it does. In this case, it has one policy attached and it allows SSM to manage it. And then if you want the granular details here, uh, here's the list. So, um, you know, SSM, it's a process that runs inside the VM. So you do have to be wary of, you know, anything you give uh, access to. But on the flip side, you're already running on Amazon's cloud we're already using their Linux image. And so adding SSM isn't exactly a, a different vector for attack. Um, it's still the same group of folks and the same uh, kind of threat area there. And so we're not too worried about SSM, but it is good to know that just for everything you add to your system, um, you know, there is a different threat analysis you'll need to perform. Um, so in this case, we have that. And what we can do now is we can go to EC2 and from EC2, what we can do is we can launch an instance and then assign it that instance profile. So we'll go ahead and click the launch instance button. And this will take one second. Um, you know, I recommend the AMD instances. So like if you like uh, want to experiment, a T3A is a really good, the T3A.nano is a really good size for that. Um, 
For the fun of the video, though, we could select ARM. So we're just selecting the Amazon Linux uh, 2, and we selected ARM. And there's different sizes here and all that. You can see there's not any, like, nano instances in ARM. Uh, but we won't be running that this long anyways. And so uh, we'll click through this. Uh, in this case, we don't care what VPC it goes in or what subnet it goes in. These are all things that are probably unique to your environment anyway. Um, you know, it's not really going to affect your implementation. But what we do care about is this IAM role. So in this case, we want to select SSM-demo, which is literally the thing we just made. So it should be all fresh in our minds and everything. Um, and from here, we can kind of just click through the rest of this. Um, the security group one is always fun and interesting because uh, by using SSM, we might not even need to open up the SSH port here. So um, we can just click that out and uh, remove that. And then at this case, it is warning us this is not a free one. So if you're on a free tier one, definitely pick a VM compatible with free tier because uh, you get a lot of uh, free stuff and you don't want to pay for it, but at the same time, it's not that huge a deal. Um, so we'll go ahead and click launch here. And in this case, um, we can choose an existing key pair. We can create a new key pair, but I think we're going to proceed without a key pair. I don't anticipate uh, connecting to this thing without SSM. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. And this will probably take minute and a half to three minutes somewhere in there so um i'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this time and then i'll catch back up with you in a minute okay well that was faster than a minute um it does say running now it's not passing its status checks yet um but it is running in theory and so the important thing here is we have ssm demo under the iam role so that means that those permissions are enabled uh and then if we click here it is going to link us back to the IAM console and tell us all about this role. Um, so the most interesting thing we can do now is that we're running Amazon Linux on an ARM VM um, and we can type uh, SSM here and that will bring up the Systems Manager console. Um, I've had some experience with the Systems Manager console. It's not very easy to configure through the tools. So if you try to do this through Terraform or CloudFormation, on a very granular level, a lot of times those options don't exist. So you may actually, no matter how good of DevOps practitioner you are, find yourself clicking through here a bit uh, just to configure it because the tools aren't quite as mature enough yet. Um, but if we click Session Manager here, this is going to pull up uh, the ability to start a session. And now we don't know if our VM is actually up and running and reporting into System Manager yet. It looks like it is, though. Okay. Well, that was really quick, so I'll have to try more of those ARM systems uh, in the future, too, because that's super interesting. But for now, we can click Start Session, and then this is going to pull up a web console. Um, a web console is not the only way to do this. Uh, you could also use the AWS CLI to use SSM uh, to create a session to your system, just like SSH. So um, oftentimes, most of the work we do is on the command line, and so we don't use this web console, uh, but for you know webcasts and videos, it's a pretty good demonstration. Uh, so if I type uptime here, um, we're now up for two minutes and we got our load averages and all that and type top. And again, this is like an ARM system, so I kind of just wanted to check it out. Uh, maybe the video is a bad time for that, um, but you can see that we are on ARCH64 and uh, up and running. So we're able to access our system. And if I do a PS and grep for uh, SSH, um, SSH is running, but I didn't actually use it. And um, I could probably, it's probably, let's do service uh, SSHD stop. And I can't do that yet. Hang on, go to root and um, service open SSH stop. How about that? Probably it's just SSH. Service SSH stop. It's not loaded. Uh, let's just kill it real quick just to demonstrate. I just want to show folks that uh, if I, I just don't want to automatically start back up. Um, if I grep for SSH now, it is running, but I did kill it. Um, so my connection didn't go away or anything. I'm here. We use this all the time for troubleshooting when SSH isn't working. Um, we can also, I believe this is a systemd system, so... Um, in this case, 
oh there's no random number generator maybe and uh so if you're running arm on something sensitive make sure you know what arm is uh this is anything but sensitive um so let's grab ssh there it's sshd so uh we can just say service sshd stop and that will stop the service and now if i grep for ssh it's gone so i'm still connect the system no ssh no key pairs configured um and then i can just click terminate here to get out of the session okay so now we go to cloudwatch logs click log group and we'll just create a quick log group called ssm sessions click create here and that's going to create a log group uh which will change our retention policy one day because uh inevitably i forget to clean this up after the video and at least it won't be keeping my logs forever uh, hopefully not but <laughs> always set a retention policy if there are logs that you don't need to store forever uh it's a pretty good practice um so now what we're gonna do is go to ssm again and then just check that our logs are being sent there we'll go ahead and click session manager and we'll go to preferences and we'll edit and then here we're going to say that we want ssm dash sessions um and we can click encrypt log data here um but the log group is not encrypted so you'd have to set that up which i'll probably do on a different video uh so subscribe to the channel and you'll see that when that comes out um so for now we're just going to do encrypt log data click save there we go so now that we're able to connect to our instance by ssm uh, we want that history to go into cloudwatch so we want to go back into IAM and then go to our roles SSM demo and attach a CloudWatch policy, which will allow us to write there. Um, these permissions are broad. So when you do this in a production situation, make sure that the resource scope is not to the star or the asterisk. Uh, you do want to confine that to a limited set of instances and targets. Um, but for the purposes of this demo, we're just going to use the broad policy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and search for CloudWatch here, and then I'm just going to go CloudWatch Logs Pool Access, and click that. And this is going to show me the contents of the policy. Um, in this case, it's all resources, and this is really what I was saying is don't, um, you want to confine this to something less than that. Uh, but for now, what we'll do is, is we will click that and say attach it. And so this will allow our instance to write logs to CloudWatch, uh, which you should always do. Um, you should always write your logs off of your system because if they're just on your system, it's easy to corrupt them, to lose them, to have them be compromised. Um, so this is a very simple and easy solution to avoiding that. Now that we have our CloudWatch logs policy in place, we can go ahead and switch back to System Manager and we can go to Session Manager and then we can start a new session uh, looks like I already have one going here, so we can click that and terminate it. And we'll start a new session. On this one. And so here we are, we're in the system, and so I can just type echo hello world here. And now I got a hello world. And I'll terminate this session. And sometimes it can take a little bit of time just because Amazon's a big distributed system, so it doesn't happen instantaneously. Um, but if we go to session history here, you can see all my different sessions as we're kind of fussing around with this stuff. And now, since we've configured CloudWatch to log there, um, there is a hot link. And so this will take us directly to CloudWatch logs. And I'm gonna click this group here. And it's gonna take one or two minutes to load. And there it is. And so um, if you see here, it says script started today and it says echo hello world. And so my command history is going straight to CloudWatch logs. And so that's a huge uh, advantage if you're somebody who is on the uh, higher end of security and compliance and you want to make sure you know every command that's ran. Uh, you want to make sure that the system crashes, it's saved somewhere. And uh, this is really big for like just trying to debug what did somebody run and when did they run it and how did they run it? Um, it's, it's definitely one of those key indicators. And then you can combine this with things like CloudWatch Insights and you can search quickly um, and create rules around these things. Uh, in general, I recommend not logging into production systems. So for instance, this is really good because if you disable SSH and you go through this, if they do log in, you get all those benefits, but 
then you can track it easier too. And if you go to um, Cloud Trail, which is probably if you're in AWS, is one of your primary tools for auditing uh, what's happening on your account and who's clicking and doing what, uh, you could see here that we have all of these going straight to Cloud Trail also. And so now we can use Cloud Trail to inspect what was happening. Uh, and this is key because it's all tied into identity and access management on AWS's side. So typically, if people are using SSH keys, uh, they may be able to share those keys across people. Whereas with IAM, we can configure it to enforce 2FA and enforce it so that if that access is restricted, they lose access to SSH in the systems. Um, there are other ways to do that, uh, but they're not quite as simple or straightforward. Uh, certainly people have used Kerberos to revoke access across networks, but that would probably take me another like 10 videos to fully explain that one. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, good luck securing and connecting to your systems. I'll talk to you next time.